Bro, Prodigy, you're going to try and keep GPK a lot higher this match. Haven't um, seen Shadow Fiend in a while, so I also don't know exactly what to expect I there. Almost uh, we, have, we have both of the builds. It's viable at the moment, I would say. Well, all right, that was quick. Cool. Winner just, like, jumped out of there. That was wild. Uh, by both builds, you mean, like, uh, magical or physical? Yeah, well, more so, like, Blink Yules or, like, a more Let's even build. Like, we've seen just, okay. like, straight-up yeah, glass I, I would, cannon. Yeah, I would call Blink Yules, like, the, the magic build, where sure, you're, you're yeah. looking to, like, one-pop people with your ulti and stuff. Um, yeah, or so, there's okay. just, like, Drum's BKB is probably viable you when you're playing with a Drow, I would say. Yeah. No. And how does that mid matchup go? Is it pretty even, or is that also Shadow Fiend favorite? No, no, that's TA. This is TA's life. It's a straight up counter pick for sure. Could be worse. Could be worse. It's like the only thing that um, Shadow Fiends usually ban, I would say. Huh. Okay. Again, okay, not the only thing, but it's a very common ban, I would say, for some of the Shadow Fiend teams that we've seen lately. It's like Queen of Pain sometimes still, and then TA. All right, well, pressure on Nisha. No, uh, no cogs plays though, eh? Yeah, I guess not. Um, it is an opportunity cost for the clockwork because they do generally like to go battery assault first. Thirty so. seconds to battle. I don't know. Has that just been reason to be not worth it? Shadow fiends, and also does Shadow fiend go next? I was gonna say he's gonna want one? raise. He so usually go that's... raise now, so yeah. I guess it's just dead. I mean, I'm sure it's still fine in some matchups. It's probably worth it in some matchups to do it. I mean, I but probably just... wouldn't have mentioned it except for the fact that Peksu mentioned it last time I was casting with him. And as a pro player, I was like, all right, so you're the still... It's like, I wouldn't want to lay in against the Shadow Fiend with free souls to start like that. I'm like, okay, that's fair. Me neither. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just still a matchup dependent thing. I think it costs a lot to do it now, though, because you have to, like, stay in the fountain unless your clockwork wants to wind up with no mana in the lane. And then That's there's true. a lot of pressure to get out early in scout lanes now because teams are just like way better at these rotation plays. Yes, that is another big opportunity cost. I think that's a really good point. Well, odds has shifted. 1.8 for Virtus Pro Prodigy and 1.85 for Team Secret. Sorry, Betway. Wait, what? Are you saying it's worth more to bet on Secret? That can't be um, right. Yes, it is by 0 0.05. I refuse to believe that is true without looking at it. <laughs> okay, what? well, I th those are the numbers that popped up. First blood on the DM. I, I didn't make possible? the numbers. I'm just reporting the numbers. Well, because they got rocked by two deathless heroes in game one. I don't know. The algorithms don't know what to do. They don't handle extremes very well, Trent. Uh, okay. All right. Well. The value um, I'm a rambling man, but I'm not a gambling man. I see. Mm -hmm. Well, a nice early start for Secret. And they are going to set up these lanes with an aggro try. So it's uh, Drow down bottom. No surprise to see Nisha mid, but then up top. It is a solo Zai right now on this Bloodseeker, and mm -hmm. uh, it's not necessarily easy for him. He does get off a of Blood right, but save is poking him hard. Yeah, DM has done the uh, the long walk, so they have the uh, edge in terms of the rotations, with, like TPs and everything. But yeah, the full force back there onto uh, Lil, as they they've got the bully action happening. They they tend to do this with the Ember too. Is if they're going to play on the side lane, they give him this radiant off lane, kind of the EG classic of a good secured farm as long as you can stop the pulls. Mm -hmm. Probably not what they were hoping for from a secret right now. So Magic, talk to me about this hard counter mid, buddy. I mean, Shadow Fiend's doing pretty damn well. What are you saying with the raises and everything? No, I'm saying he's 13-3 against the 9-3 TA. He's winning. It's Timber time. Well, Timber's it. DM dies again. Sorry, distracted us. Uh, I guess he's level one with Timber Chain. So yeah, there you go. That, that explains it. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's Shadow Fiend. Like, you think about where he is to play, once the side blades start coming out, he's just, like, free feud, uh, free food for all the pure damage. That's I the main so issue, it, right? It, it ramps up. These early levels are where it's kind of even, but it'll start I mean, to shift more for TA. Yeah, TA doesn't do anything early, right? She just stands there with refraction. Has been killed. 
I think it's also just kind of like a, a tempo thing too, where like the Shadow Fiend oh. isn't necessarily a hero that's going to be hunting you in the jungle or anything. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that's a good, good point about that dynamic. Bottom lane, Lil almost dead. Now the turn on the puppy. He's taking tower shots, gets stroked, barely lives. 50 HP. DM does hit level two now, so at least has reactive armor, but you can see Matu laying in the frost arrows. Denied. Lil actually beats him to level three. What's Zai doing? Four last hits. Not uh, getting that Bloodrite spam control that you like to see is, uh, geez, again, they're still back on them. I mean, this tri lane is nasty. That's going to be two down. Lil and DM both dead. The clockwork in the front line, the venge with the stuns. Yapsor will die to the tower. But at the the same same token though, doesn't Shadow Fiend kinda wanna jungle? He sort of relies on farming neutrals with raises. So yeah, yeah sure. you're giving space to TA, but Shadow Fiend's equally happy that TA is doing the same thing. You know, she's not hunting the same well, way. Oh, that was scary. He was trying to hide there to uh, to make sure that uh, SF didn't get that room, and then it spawned top anyway. Yeah, and I just think the TA is like it's more important for that hero to be free, you know, and like make sure no one's like invading her stacks and like getting her ancients and everything. I'm really excited to see what build Nisha ends up going for. I love watching the blink jewels, but I kind of feel like that's not going to be at this game. It doesn't seem necessary, really, like with the hook I, shot and with the yeah. drow. I would agree from a purely spectator perspective. Um, big fan. <laughs> oh, GPK takes a double raise mid. Third one hit by the refraction. That's the other thing, too, is that SF has to go for these, like, burst kills. So it makes sense why this is kind of a good matchup for the TA. Although Nisha stays aggro on this. Yeah, again, a little bit close there. I can see uh, still at the last refraction. Zai still with 8 CS, though. Uh, he is playing support Bloodseeker right now. Radiant Hasn't died yet, so I guess that's a, a victory. He is I mean, the Timber only has 5, so... I mean, although DM has at least been so present that he still has more gold than Zai. Uh, probably more XP. I don't know. It's about even. It's actually like half a level up for Zai. And it's not a big difference between the farmers either. I mean, Matsu is number 1, but it's only by 150, 200 gold. Look at this though, GBK hits six and they just instantly bring Yapsorm in. It spots him with the trap and the tree line. A good call. But uh, that uh, allowed uh, Nisha to just get like a little bit more gold and XP here before the traps become a real threat. So Trent, I think I can explain the 1.8s for you. Um, that's the the series odds, the like live odds that roll, not game two. I odds. mean, still though. So <laughs> I'm just saying, it's, it's yeah, like, yeah no, I, I hear you on that. The roller coaster of the best of three, not individual map. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. It's still wild though. That's one of the best I'm odds you're gonna see on that. secret in a hot minute. Look Although, at this level two Wind that. Ranger still rotates in. And Nisha likely to fall. They need a bit more damage. Can they find it? Save presses forward, and they do get the kill. Haste to make the escape. And that'll be it. Just a kill on the Shadow Fiend. They're bringing him left to get in. Secret. He's got two remnants. Oh. Oh. Dude, they want this catapult wave kill. They, they want the tower. This is a smart play. Uh, they, they don't have enough much, resources though. to tank it. Yeah. Well, that's the great thing about Ember. You can make that play, and then you just Knock jump to your remnant time. back up top, and very little downtime. Not a big opportunity yeah. cost there. I like that a lot. Try and create something with your catapult, uh, as well as just like straight up pressure Nisha out of there. He actually came down bottom. What is he up to now? Trying to make something happen with Yapsor? Maybe hoping that they would catch the timber like jungling or something? And he's just gonna get to go the small camp and get his souls back. Okay. Yeah, moving into treads. If this works though, and they help him get a kill in the DM, this is kind of all right. All right. This yeah, I, I think they're gonna get this. Battery assault very effective against Timber Saw, as you can see. And Matsu takes you credit. To see. Stall it. Such well done. Tomorrow. All right, just the uh, the jungling SF. That's cool. And it, it's Puppy who gets mid. So he'll have a very early six. He's already five and a quarter at eight minutes. 
And they start diving now. onto Zai. Yep, only level five on this Blood Seeker. I yeah, don't think they can kill him. Might though. make it out. The slight misses and Shackle only level one. Look at Zai. <laughs> Zai is so good at this though. He's a great min maxer, and this ended up being an amazing bait play. They don't get off the blood right. Save will head up to the high ground, and the Delta split might prevent either from going down. Yeah, they'll both live. Yeah, the pings came out a bit too late. I think he was trying to say that Nisha might be there, but uh, he actually went up in instead. So. That was like the most Zai play I've ever seen, though. Yeah, the instant just like backpedaling a go. Oh, hello. Yeah, yep. you still want to keep chasing me? As soon as they run, you go to fight. And as soon as they chase, you go to run. You just keep playing that game one step ahead. It's like when you bump into somebody and you both go left and you both go right. And then you do it another time. And you're like, wait, what just? Ah. The life of Zai. The life of Zai. <laughs> Matu is getting uh, spotted by those obs here as he retreats into the, the triangle. So, ah, the home Fred of every drought player. Yes. And gets the stack too. Nice. Beautiful. Not, not as busted as this used to be, but still very fast. And even gets a broom handle. That's a nice addition. Don't get the hey, attack range, it. sadly, but... I love the new Drow compared to the old versions with like the multi shot what? and everything. She feels oh. way more interactive compared to like the precision Dyer's aura stuff. Yeah. Like, activate your precision great. aura on the catapult wave. Wow, guys, I'm gonna get the global push going. Yeah, if you Radiant did not spam scanning. some games when Drow's ult was one shotting ancients, though. Um, oh, yeah, that was a good feel. The, the like, instant you, you just, blink by. Yeah, you just screwed up. Like that, that those were. Some peak carry Dota days. Top tower well, see you attack. guys later. I'm gonna go hit the triangle. The only thing I ever really abused was the that patch where Shadow Shama could solo Roche with the ward trap. I, <laughs> I did yeah. like 15 games straight of doing that, and I think I won like all of them. It was so stupid. Puppy. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Be okay. Both teams starting to reinforce, but neither I think really eager for a fight. That's uh, Tome time, though, so soon things will be popping off here for Yapsor. Have we had a rupture yet? I don't think so. I think, yeah, I, I'm not he sure. He hasn't been six for that long, so. Under attack. Radiant's bottom tower is nope. under attack. Yeah, the, uh, the catapult is approaching top. Down, though. That's going to be weird this is. Like, both teams have two heroes farming very well, and everyone else is struggling. Well, it's also, that's like the Team Secret Classic in terms of like spreading a lot of that wealth, especially the Puppy Puck patch. That was the one where I've never seen a team who farmed so evenly. Yeah, but this, this is particularly top heavy for both teams. Well, what happened too is that they, they rotated um, Nisha so early out of that mid, down to that like bottom jungling thing and gave the mid over to Puppy. Like Puppy's still poor, but at least his levels are uh, fairly high, right? He's like level seven without the tome. Oh. First rupture just went out and uh, not so effective. Turns out Ember can remnant away. And if the distance is long enough, Trent, he doesn't Radiant's take any damage. Tower has fallen. Oh, Lazarus. I yeah. Know. And they use that opportunity with the rupture down to finish off the tier one tower mid. Big moves here from Virtus Pro Prodigy. I heard a hook shot. There it is. Save gonna be caught by Yapsor. And not gonna live. But he's a master tier wind ranger. I assumed he would just survive. Bottom tower well is under attack. Battery assault has the one up there, unfortunately. He must be pretty pleased about that Arcana, I would think. He was so it's thankful he leveled his battle pass up to 1,790. <laughs> wow, GBK's at 2,400. What do you even get at that point? Uh, more treasures or something. That's like if you won all the ultra rares. He's just very confident uh, in his chances at TI. You know, it's Pandering. Like, uh, it's an investment. Don't look at my battle pass. Uh-oh. Yeah. Well, I meant for the prize money, but yeah, he's probably just pandering for, for good seating. Is that to get us a remnant out? But oh, man, that was close. Oh, remnants are so good, and he's actually going to live. He had a haste rune that whole time, then got ruptured and still made it out. All right, we're zero for two on the ruptures here. Yeah, but he did get caught holding the, the hot pepper, so. Oh, you know, well, it wasn't all victories around here. His mouth is on fire. Now Nisha mid lane, TP home. Man, it's a hell of a TP game, that is for sure. <laughs> Between the ruptures, the ember initiations, the timber saw, the TA, who's stunning people? Uh, you got searing chains Basically and you got saved. magic missile. 
That's a, yeah. Yeah, I guess you got you got shackle and sort of uh, ink swell. I mean, you got. I mean, we've swapped. We have like some spells, but I guess it's just like the real ganking heroes. It's uh, you got to be careful about what you're spending. All right, Yap Sword's dead though. Uh, nope. Oh, and he saw chains. Yeah, he chained the creeps. Yap uh, like, all right, I'm good. I just panned up there. I didn't even see it. Oh, another TP. They even had that ward too. They probably saw him. I assume hide Radiant in there. That's why he went in. Fortified. <laughs> Save goes for the uh, shackle mid. Can't quite get it. Off the creeps. So what's Radiant Nisha looking at? Manta style. All right. Yeah, that's fine. I, again, it's just like standard oh. items with the drow. I think you just want to stand, stand tall and right click. They, that's the double oh. silent hook shot. Bump into two. They get epileptic kid. They get Lil. Easy setup and a double for Matsu. <laughs> Big stuff. Yeah, he's really snagging these kills. Nisha still no kills to his name. Puppy's got okay. Nisha's 0 1 and 1. Puppy's 1 0 and 5. Pick it up, even, Nisha. Obviously, he's even Puppy's got a kill. <laughs> even Puppy. This man died 15 times last game. He'd still have one kill. 1 0 and 5. So still a small lead for Virtus Pro Prodigy, now down to about 200 net worth and secret with the XP lead to about 2,000. Yeah, GBK's made like zero effort to be involved. He is just straight up rushing the Deso Blink as fast as he can. And to his credit, they're going to be done at 15 minutes and yeah, probably just heading into 16. He'll be uh, ready to uh, either head to the Roche Pit, a little bit risky versus a, a clock, of course, Radiant's depending on the, the current status of the enemy team, but certainly willing to try and fight it up a little bit. Roche definitely going to be on the menu for Virtus Pro Prodigy, and that'll be their moment to really start getting a lot of momentum. They've already got two tier one towers, so it's a good start. I mean, the problem is it's also there for uh, Secret, right? I mean, they have a uh, Shadow Fiend on their team. They have a Drow. They have lots yeah. of right-click damage to get in there. Never refuse. That's true. It's also hard for GVK to necessarily go like super hard with uh, just Deso and Blink. He doesn't have uh, the best coverage heroes this game. You know, you think of like an ABBA or like an Oracle or Avenge or something to like bail you out if it gets a little bit hairy. He, he can't just like jump He's in in, yeah. in, a, in total abandon. Like like Miracle gets set up so well in his games, right? He's got like four heroes to allow him to go nuts on the PA or the TA. Yeah, that's a, a good point. Bottom but, lane. What is his save? Like a shackle? Uh-oh, DM. And this is where, like, yeah, you've got reactive armor against Drow. She also hits pretty hard. She silences you for four seconds, and uh, you don't have a dispel yet, so. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he's actually going to go blade mail first item. Not going to be able to go for the dispel, but kind of a yeah. cool move from Virtus Pro Prodigy, thinking about going into the Roche Pit. Radiant Does get scattered out by the Rocket Flare, but the TA is invisible, so they might wait for the Flare to expire and then go for this. Yeah, there it is. Sneaky from GPK. Starts it with the double meld, too. Oh, that's so a, uh, quite yeah, nice. Into the triple minus 24 armor. <laughs> now, can he get away with this, though? Whoa. This feels risky. Epileptic, top, epileptic kid. kid. He had the slight dodge on the silence from the tree line there from Matu. That was scary. Nicely done, but that doesn't uh, give them Roche. Now Roche is also running out. They might notice him. I don't think they had vision on him running around in there. Indeed, they didn't. So they might not know this is started. I didn't see if it was flared. It might have been. I'm not sure. I mean, he just had an invis rune run from full to zero, so I'm going to guess he didn't flare. Secret all grouped up, posturing like they want to kill mid. Save, not that high value target. They're looking for double force staffs, actually. Both Wind Ranger and Grimstroke prioritizing the force. That's not good. an item that is the you same normally want against Bloodseeker, but yeah, dumb good against everyone Dyer's else. Bottom tower is under attack. Saves for uh, the silence as well. Radiant I think scan. DM's item choice is really hard this game. I don't know, like the blade mail is like kind of okay, but he can't go Yules because like there's Blood Rite and Cogs and even Shadow Fiends. Like it just doesn't really save you from anything, even if you dispel the silence. Then the other item is Lotus, but it's so expensive that it's going to be a while before you get there because your TA is a vacuum absorbing all the farm on the map. So he has to go for this like Radiant's middle of the road tower. item in the blade mail because it's like half the cost of a lotus. 
What about Greaves? Is that, is that too passive to go Greaves first? Because he already has the Arcane Boots, like... Uh, yeah, maybe this is a bit too passive. I, I can see it past being viable, because they do start to fight for both. Safe yeah. is dead. So is Lil. I mean, they bring him down so fast. It's paper thin. I mean, the multi-shot just did, uh, like, 800 damage to Grimstroke in that tiny burst. They're gonna buy back. They want to hold this, but now DM, he takes the rupture, and he's trying to inch his way forward, but still taking a lot of damage. Gets up to the high ground, but still dead to the trial right clicks. <laughs> Feels like they still just need GPK, and he uh, he's not confident yet without the BKB. Now, well, now Roche can be stolen by Secret. It looks like BPP trying to move in. Roche now 900 HP. Secret come out of the pit. They want to take the fight. They'll oh, bring man. down Epileptic Kid. Shackle doesn't latch. That blood right was so good. The way Zion placed it right there, it just forced them into a terrible situation where they felt like they still wanted to fight and contest and pull them out of the Roche pit. And so they, they all like went down into the river, but then Ember just died. Uh, he had remnants and stuff, but he just got battery salted and silenced and couldn't get out. Things starting to look grim for Virtus Pro Prodigy. Only two kills in 19 minutes. Radiance middle tower. Tier one down. Nisha working on BKB and Drow gonna go for Hurricane Pike. Radiant I would say in this like draft versus attack. draft, the first Roche lineup, it, that's gotta give you like an extra 30 or 25% edge in just winning this game straight up. Like it's so yeah. crucial for both of these strategies to Radiant's take that. Middle tower yeah, definitely. Attack. Bottom, yep, so we're gonna jump uh, into DM. Top tower is he actually gets attack. cogged out of the blood right, but now hook shot to follow up another rupture. Dyer, DM gonna TP. No, oh. oh, he's not. Yule's blood right off the mark again. I mean, they can't finish him without uh, one of the right clickers, so at least they have that. Bonzer's actually in the pit still, holding this uh, Aegis as they start moving over there. Now, oh, what a sneaky play. Multi-shot hits GPK. TA takes it out, defensive blink. And now Secret can just play so much more offensive. Spend some time on the enemy side of the map. Zai by himself over here. He's trying to bait him in. He's got the Yules. Yeah, there's I mean, the swap look at from Puppy. And he will play Sacrificial Lamb most likely. Will falls. He takes the ult God, from he's so tanky. He lived. 40 HP. He's still alive. Radiant. I mean, he's tranquil tower. mech. He just tower. runs and swaps someone, gives the vision for everyone else to follow. He's got a goofy amount of armor right now. Wow. Yeah, it really does. Whenever he's near Matu. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Yeah, that is uh, definitely a problem with the TA, for sure. Like, that's... Like, there's definitely a lot of benefits for the hero in this game, but the fact that if you're ever near the Drow and it's not cancelled or something, you can't even kill the supports. Epileptic Kid looking to uh, cut a wave up top. Radiance Making as much space as he can. But now 15 to do at Dyer's 2 at 21 minutes. I like it. That is just so free. Radiance middle tower has fallen. All right, how close are we, though? 2450, so it's just like 700 gold away from the BKB Radiance still. Radiance middle tower is under attack. It's coming, but it's costly. Oh, he went for presence of the Dark Lord. Affects buildings. Ooh, the GG. Actually don't see this talent that often, but this is the timing to hit this high ground. And you can see Matsu, Hurricane Pike Radiant's sitting very far back thanks fall. to that Venge aura. Dyer's top tower is under also attack. maxed out, and this is just a hard hold to make for Virtus Pro po uh, Prodigy. Has they try to clear out the creep waves. Like they're actually yeah. damaging yeah. through back door at 21 minutes. I mean, they've even got the afterburns. They got the dragon scale for extra right click damage. It's at least up top, GPK puts a little bit of pressure on. He gets that creep wave in. And there it is. That's the BKB, but they can't get the retreating shackle there from save. So one lane of Rax was given up here to get the BKB. They have two kills in this whole match. Radiant and they need to find this post Aegis fight with the BKB. And they need a hell of an engagement. They, they need like a, a four for two or like some sort of a big wipe or something. Yep. This Radiant game is in dire straits, and there's that BKB attack. for Shadow Fiend. Second item completed now after the Manta, and Drow actually queues up Butterfly. 
They'll be edgy. You go a little bit greedy. This is how much they've gotten already with this Aegis. Um, also just super good versus TA4. I'm not sure what Virtus Pro Prodigy are doing right now, but Secret are not backing up. They are committed to the push. And now Prodigy starts to TP home. They didn't get anything in exchange for that tier two. They thought that they would be moving uh, back to retreat and like get all their items. But instead, yeah. they just try and force one more fight with this Aegis. And they've still got 30 seconds left until it expires. Matu, not afraid to die, just needs to make sure it's in a good position. That's a defensive link by GBK. That is not going to be the fight they need. Puppy stunned up. He's going to be in trouble. And now Matsu down low. Aegis expiring in about 15 now. Four staff back. Manta just barely lives. Yeah, they want to chase this because it's closing out. They know it's close. 10 seconds. Remember, it will turn into a regen. Another great blood right. Beautiful hook shot from Clockwork. They'll bring down Epileptic Kid. There's the BKB used by TA. Oh, no! He power shot it! With two seconds left, the Aegis goes down, and Matu comes back at full HP. That, that was an unfortunate, unfortunate play. Yeah. I mean, he would have just got earned back up anyway, because like, no one else is back out there. It's true, but still. Uh, yeah, your, your YOLO at least power shot after. Not possible. Yep. Another silence comes out. Matu still feeling pretty confident here, chipping away at these barracks. That blood right that caught the TA and the Ember just ruined any potential there for a, a second go. Zai just so good. 16 to 3. Secret handily in control. Go! 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 Great use of the Aegis. Yeah, that was a crazy first Roche. That's actually hard to believe that was a first Aegis. Mm -hmm. to get uh, an entire lane and uh, a tier three. Smoke and the world's most now. classic smoke out. Yeah, this is a surprising play from Secret. I guess they'll bump right into Puppy and Yapsor, and they'll get a duo of kills, it looks like. Now starting to chase down Zai. Hook shot out, actually kept the clockwork alive. If Zai can live, this would be big, but they've got enough stun lock. I think he's dead, and yes, sir. Radiance top tower is under attack. Good catch from Burst Pro Prodigy. Yeah, I would have to watch that again. I'm not sure what they were hoping for. I guess they maybe were thinking they might be sending like one hero bottom and the rest going top or something, and they were hoping for a pickoff. But that was one of those classic situations where like everyone always smokes out after that. Like they know they need something desperate. The BKBs are coming back. They're gonna try that fight. Of course, we also have like you know omniscient vision, so it makes it a little bit easier. Most definitely. This butterfly is going to be really scary on the drought. It's right around the corner. TA knows that she needs the MKB, and that will be the next choice, but less than halfway there. Uh, another uh, lovely timber game. This one was real rough, though, because he didn't even get like that mid match if you hope for it. They hop on Epileptic Kit, but he will be able to run it out of there in time. He makes it back, and Radiant now this tier one likely to fall. Use the free glyph. No uh, clumsy net for them this game, unfortunately. But, uh, I feel like I've seen a lot of that one lately. Always feels fall. bad for the squishy guys who get uh, put up against it. Dyer are scanning. Now movement forward. Secret still ready to fight. One outer tower remains. Two sets of barracks. We'll see that Roche timer momentarily. Could be a, a nice early Roche favoring Secret. Radiant are scanning. Yeah, there's that gonna drought. matter, honestly, with the the butterfly already done. Yeah, they are completely fine with any timing. She hits real hard. Although true, if it goes a little bit later, Radiant maybe the MKB can fortified. be there, but it would take a hell of a farming effort from GPK. This might be their best chance at something. As uh, it is a medium Roche timer, about a minute twenty, so just a minute left now. Okay. But a 10 second PKB still remains on Nisha as he stands tall, knowing that he's got the backup of the double swap from Puppy. Venge, uh, Shadow Fiend, just such a, a crazy good combo. Still, the swap and save. Puppy jumps in, destroys save, and now DM, he's gonna be in trouble. A great ult from the Shadow Fiend, catches two. Now they're gonna look towards Epileptic Kid. Remnant back, and he's got one, but maybe a little more. Shadow Fiend with the right clicks, not enough for staff with the save. <laughs> That bonus 68 agile. He is just swinging. 
Yep. Uh, that's a buyback on save. So they still have a 5v5. The tower barely stays standing. Backdoor protection kicked in just in time. Man, so that's going to have a uh, halberd pretty soon, too. Which will make these plays in GBK even harder. Trying to come to fruition. He's just, oh, it's KB to retreat. KB. That's There's still a swap nice. here. That was a nine second charge. Hook shot in. It's not over yet. Gapsor taking big damage, but now on the retreat. Epileptic Kid jumps in, does secure the kill. Soul buying comes out, but doesn't latch yeah, onto anything and they'll let Puppy fall. That was a, a great play by Epileptic Kid in the back line there. Is, wow, is he actually going to get over the yet? Still? They get saved. Zai, pretty fast right now. He's going to look to chase down Epileptic Kid. Going to need a few more. Nisha also still alive. DM has the blade nail, but they'll kill him straight through it. Now the PA, no BKB. She's oh, in big trouble and done. <laughs> That's the dangerous part about the Bloodseeker, Trent. Right when you think you won the fight, you remember, oh yeah, we're all on 20% HP. True, true. The game is hard. This is GPK. Man, they're still sticking out with just the cores hanging around if you have to make a long run. That was, uh, ah, man. Like, the hook shot in from Yapsor, I think, was trying to set up for a swap play from Puppy, because he was, like, trying to inch forward, but then Epileptic Kid jumped in the back line, got the, uh, the bolas off to stop that swap in, so then they get the double kill on the supports, and you're like, oh, snap, maybe they can actually turn this. But then there's just still way too much left for Matsu and Nisha with the side to just kind of, like, back them up the whole time. Now, having that halberd, if GBK wants to try and fight them when he comes back. Now, Broch gonna die in the blink of an eye. Asia's and she's secured. It'll be Matsu that takes the second life. And Crimson Guard very close for Puppy. This Venge, super tanky. I feel like Puppy just has like a little wheel next to his desk and he just like spins it to decide what item he feels like buying every game. <laughs> Like they're all good choices, but this guy will just pick like any aura on any hero, and he's like, yeah, this looks good. No, I'll buy hard on CM, sure. That, that seems strong this game. Yeah. But Crimson Guard mech is, uh, it's perfect for what they need because they don't have an aura off laner, right? They, they have this Bloodseeker who has these certain requirements, especially the Yules first. So they're just like, yeah. with all the farm that he got this game, Puppy just gets uh, I mean, super valuable If you showed stuff. me this in a vacuum, my first thought would be, Tranquil Boots mech, how the fuck do you have enough mana to sustain that? But it hasn't really been an issue. He saves his mana to drop the, the big rotation. They've got the arcane boots on the clockwork, which has also been key. It's true. She is not that bright. Like 1.5 in game. Yeah. And you don't see the arcane boots on clockwork all that much. So it is part of the strategy, right? Yeah, I would think so. Really just for everyone, too. Yeah, you, you need a set. And uh, Mega is looking pretty imminent here. There is still a set of barracks up top. Really just a melee barracks. The ranged is at 18 HP. I mean, something as simple as those arcane boots and that urn, though, it, it shows why they were able to make that play on the first Aegis, where they took the mid and then instantly rotated bottom. Which is all the sustain they have. All right, Grimstro Gold comes out. The soul bind, some follow up. Matsu dying quickly, as is Puppy. That's the Aegis. Megas. They also get Megas. Yeah, pretty good. And now Matsu coming back up. Stuck in place on top of three. Manta style trying to make it out. Matsu tanking three heroes in the back line. GPK with the BKB, the disarm, the drow running out of options, but this Shadow Fiend now running amok. Virtus Pro Prodigy kill. doing everything they can, but the Drow still standing. Epileptic Kid getting brought down by Zai. And DM, he's on the greatest chase of his life, but he gets silenced by Matsu. The turnaround is here. He's low on mana. He's got the disarm. Matsu eats the cheese, and the timber saw falls. Oh, Zai on Nisha the other just side. Give that to him. Also goes down. Thanks, Nisha. How helpful. <laughs> GG. That's it. Go to game two, baby. Uh, that was 22, game or sorry, game three. Jeez, 22 to nine. Secret, square it up, and we're going to the decider. Bit of backup.